Hey guys, Colbert here. Welcome back to the Raid Champ Guides and Infographics channel. Thank you guys so much for subscribing and watching the video so far. You guys are amazing. If you're interested for the infographics showcased on the thumbnail of the video, then here it is. Very basic, but I will also be linking down a full guide for the champion feature today, Apothecary. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So Apothecary, one of the best rare champions in the game for any account starting out out there um honestly since this champion can be acquired from both mystery shards and ancient shards his value increases because he's available basically from the get-go from the start you can get it from the mystery shard a 1.4 percent chance to get a rare and then from ancient shards where you do have that 83 percent chance for rare uh which actually will go up once the 2x chances go out but yes this champion is definitely worth leveling up would you level him up to level 60? Well, that is all up to you. But I will be showcasing him at level 60 with Ascension and some good gear with relatively low speed, I would say. Not going crazy with the speed, just to showcase general utility since Apothecary is pretty simple to build, honestly. There's no, not much of a difference in terms of the gear that you want to have on him. The focus should be speed and I'll explain what I mean by that, right? Let's get started with the gear that I have on him just to explain triple speed set okay when you begin the game and you get apothecary for the first time you'll have him maybe at level 30 eventually level 40 and then level 50 think about and wait before you get him to level 60 it's it's highly highly recommended to wait out on your level 60 champions and get those really really good ones and apothecary doesn't change that much when he gets to level 60 as long as you don't want to use him in, in let's say other areas such as the clan boss and i'll explain what i mean by that in a little bit so speed set right here on the apothecary there's not so many different sets that you can use the whole point is to give him a lot of speed to for him to be fast you want him to be as fast as possible the reason is because he boosts the speed and provides a speed buff to your allies speed sets are good divine speed sets are good any other set is good as long as he's got maybe a double rolled speed and on the substat or a triple roll if you're really really lucky of course you need speed boots and then if you are very very lucky with gear relentless set will go a long way and you will notice on how strong he is with a relentless set that being said relentless is not that easy to get so i didn't equip any of my relentless gear for this showcase and then as we go down to the different pieces of gear you might even consider reflex but that is more difficult to get since it's acquired from the ice golem boss the majority of gear that can be used on apothecary is say stalwart um speeds toxic all those lifesteal all those can be acquired from dragon which is the more easily done dungeon out of all the dungeons that we have available in the game okay so i have speed on the substats that was my focus here and then if you can get 80 percent on the chest piece and gloves then go for it if not it's fine but it's nice to have Apothecary with a little bit of tankier stats, so the focus is shifted uh, on uh, another champion in terms of when you're fighting the fight. You want Apothecary to not die when you are running him in the dungeons, okay? Maybe you want the focus to be on a more tankier champion with more defense instead of Apothecary. Since Apothecary will be there for the speed up, which he has on the A3, plus the Terminator boost, and the healing on a two-turn cooldown, which can also crit, which is kind of insane if you think about it, since the crit heal will be double of what it's um, shown here on the skill. But just note that you don't need to build him with crit. Crit is just an added bonus. If you can get some crit rate on him, it would be better for his heals. But if not, don't stress too much about it, since he still heals for a significant amount. And then his A1 is a simple triple hitting skill, which will just very much benefit from masteries and i'll explain those in a little bit but overall i have him built with 234 speed 60,000 health which is a lot i know and at the start you would probably have him at about 40,000 with maybe 2,000 defense but as you want to use him in more harder and harder dungeons you want to up those numbers a little bit doesn't need any accuracy he doesn't need any resistance doesn't need any crit damage honestly since his damage is not the reason that you have him you have him there to support the damage dealers all right and then uh, as we go to the masteries this is a pretty standard build for apothecary so you go in with deadly precision extra crit rate for the heals and then you go crit damage 
a little bit of life if he drops low whirlwind of death is nice if he gets a kill during some runs and then you get bring it down with extra bit of damage kill streak there so in case he gets a kill through you can get uh, a little bit of extra damage added for the remaining of the fight then of course giant slayer this is huge because he has a triple hitting skill triple hitting skills are very specific since they can proc they can enable the giant slayer damage multiple times compared to war master war master can be enabled once per skill okay so single target or double hitting attacking champions benefit more from having a war master mastery compared to the giant slayer mastery that's why you will see such a difference in different builds throughout our videos where giant slayer or war master is picked compared to the, the specific champions a1 skill that is what happens for the most part unless it's a very very specific showcase and a very specific champions um, usefulness so giant slayer is amazing here but as i said unless you're doing clan boss you will not notice the giant slayer damage as much since um on on normal fights the normal enemies don't get such high uh, amounts of damage dealt on them on the clan boss though this throughout the fight will stack up and you'll see some noticeable numbers coming in from apothecary and of course the support route really really helps to get a little bit of extra health who's he's healed by five percent that is amazing and as you go down the support tree cycle of magic can be useful for his a3 and a2 skill and then of course spirit haste if you have the extra energy to farm more masters of course you go and get a little bit more scrolls and then you can finish off with methodical or lasting gifts i would go personally lasting gifts since this can extend the duration of that speed up buff that apothecary provides by um one more turn which is amazing uh, to have so let's have a look at apothecary honestly the showcasing of apothecary is not as much since his potential is just there just as a speed up buffing champion so let's go into the dungeons we'll go to lower dungeons just to see on what he actually does but don't worry about him being replaced in the future he's very much useful for uh, the faction wars going to the dungeons for the faction wars helping you for high elf crypts there him and uh arbiter two champions available basically pretty easily can help you complete the high elf crypts to 63 stars very very easy so let's continue let's go into the dungeons and have a look at apothecary so let's have a look on dragon 20 and we'll see on how this team operates we have apothecary there who is a tremendous healer and speed booster termiter booster having the speed above basically provides a tremendous boost compared to your opponents especially if you manage to have a champion that also applies a speed down but debuff then you have a very much difference in the turn order of your own champions and the enemy champions having the the possibility of even going twice or three times before the enemy waves can manage to take their own turns so let's have a look at the team in action when you're running a dungeon such as dragon you want to make sure that you are running also a very very strong poisoner such as frozen banshee she has a very strong poison sensitivity skill which can enable can enable the strong version of poison debuffs to be applied on the boss when the poison sensitivity debuff is active and that is very very crucial in getting the boss down you don't need as much damage as you would think if you do have the poisons which also kale can provide through his a3 skill and a1 skill and then we also have a very strong defense down champion which can also enable the waves to drop down a little bit quicker through kale's aoe damage since her Defense down is the stronger version at a 100% chance, which is amazing for a free champion, a very much accessible champion within the game. And then finally, High Katoon is also accessible to everybody through uh, just leveling up and, and playing the game for 30 days, okay? Her speed boosting and also speed up buff benefits the fact that you might not have it active through Apothecary, let's say, and then you'll have it through High Katoon. Three tier cooldown for both skills. You'll eventually have both. Uh, going at the same time sometimes as long as as long as it's not you know too crazy in terms of the speed difference then you should be totally fine let's go into the dungeon though and have a look at both um at basically every single champion here is just the, the the utility that all of the champions provide together that will really help you push through and beat dungeon 20 which is a, a pretty much a break point in terms of 
deciding where okay i'm doing very well in the game and now i'll be starting to get that five star and six star piece of gear which will prove essential for um just gearing up your champions as you might think you know oh look at that as you might think that um gear is not important it's really as important as champions equipping your your champion right is really really important and giving them the correct pieces will help them push through and beat each different part of the game uh we saw haikatoon there just get re, re destroyed there i think i have very um equipped a little bit different for the hard doom tower makes it makes her a little bit squishy but it's totally fine that's why she got targeted there and we're also fighting magic enemies which magic enemies hate spirit enemies because of the affinity difference they always target the the um affinity disadvantage champion in there so spirit when you are doing uh, 20 which is magic so that's how the uh let's have a look at how this goes by the way i have my war maiden in the stun set don't worry too much if you don't have that or my kill also those are actually used for the hard version of the doom tower and oof, kill goes down but it's totally fine since i still have frozen banshee who's built much much tankier than everybody else honestly if just frozen banshee and apothecary survive i should still be able to beat the boss even though it will be at a slower time uh, than what i would like you see the constant boost of termiter look at the decrease in cooldown that's that was actually his uh master he's there proccing for apothecary i want to see him just taking a ton of turns and uh, just really helping all of my champions survive so war maiden is still getting targeted because um even though she's positive affinity because she doesn't have as much health as the other two champions i have built so frozen banshee and apothecary probably have about two times the health that war maiden has that's why they don't get targeted um as much but you see here at a two minutes run this is not an ideal run not the fastest run but as long as you have a 100 percent success rate run then you should be fine and you'll see on how good frozen banshee's poisons will be here We'll see some hits from apothecary but he's not there again as i said for the damage but he still can do damage it's not zero when he's got giant slayer that mastery i've mentioned at the start of the video so let's see it in action look at all those poisons there stacking up from a single champion uh, we even have a defense down but it's totally fine and um get some healing coming in from apothecary there to keep everybody healthy and since frozen banshee is in a regen set also heals up a little bit on her own we still should be fine i believe in uh in beating this there apothecary healed himself and look at the bar of poisons there boom doing about 30 25 percent i would say of the boss's health that is quite insane uh, so just get the poisoner to survive to the end no matter how and you'll see this go down and, and you see how much uh of a difference apothecary played in there and Haikatoon was basically zero in this fight. Same thing with Kale, wasn't that important. He he eventually died. But um yeah, Frozen Banshee and Apothecary really showed their worth for this run. So if you want to be using Apothecary for the arena, just consider that Apothecary is used honestly for the early part of the game. You will not see an Apothecary in the later parts of the game. So if we have a look at our website over here with Apothecary, you will realize that. His, his ratings are low, but it doesn't mean that he's not useful for the early game. Just not that useful for the later parts of the game. We're talking Dungeons 25, Dungeons on Hard Mode 10. You will never see an Apothecary, unfortunately. But all the way to Dungeons 20, you will find Apothecary being useful, and you'll find an area where you will see him being useful. It does not mean, though, that he does not have such a good value which is why faction wars is pretty high at 75 comparing it to all the other areas i find all the values pretty reasonable since again he will not be an end game insane champion but he will be a definite carry for you to reach maybe the mid to late parts of the game i would say mid game now is considered to do dungeons 20 okay and help you definitely get that arbiter to help you even push a little bit more uh, for the arenas so going back to the arena if we have a look at the arena guys when you are initially building an arena team and you manage to get apothecary why would you use two speed booster well you want to have your team be be tuned and having a speed tuned team means that um 
your team, your own team will go before the enemy team goes. And I don't have the uh, the opportunity to try anything because I'm at very high ends of the gold five, which you'll never see an apothecary being used. I'm just going to give you guys an example of a team that you could use on your own with apothecary and easy to get champions, which everybody should have, which is like a, a base starter champion, high cartoon, and then apothecary, and then maybe war maiden. That is the most basic burst kind of setup that you will see in arena so it would be um high cartoon there in the lead it would be uh kale and we find war maiden then apothecary this is the most basic setup that you'll see for most of the defenses uh, at any of the bronze or even some some of the silver tiers okay the reason for that is that high cartoon has the aura you will speed boost and also speed up buff then you also have apothecary there who can also provide a significant speed above also and terminator boost okay so these two together work very well to help your other two champions manage to get a turn even if they're low speed in order to catch up to the opponent and take them down but i'm not going to go even against this duchess because this will probably not end well this Duchess is probably very very tanky i'm just explaining to you guys on how you can use uh, apothecary there for a potentially successful run in the arena but we're talking beginners arena only and then if we have a look at campaign you can potentially also use for the nightmare campaign apothecary plus another champion that can have some sort of control so what i would do is i would have apothecary plus another champion maybe with a stun set or stun on their own kit maybe sill of the drakes a day 180 champion uh, received from just daily logging into the game so what you get out of that is basically a lot of control from Silver Drakes. She has her own revive, she has her own stuns, and then an additional healer, which would be Apothecary. And that would help you push through for, I would say, the majority of, um, of the stages here on the nightmare difficulty of the campaign. So, guys, this was the video showcase of Apothecary. Thank you all so much for watching this channel so far if you haven't already thank you all again and i will see you in the next one see ya